Green Lantern, issue eight, legacy number five, four, four. So, uh, oh, and this is uh, Jeremy Adams writing with a man Kate and you helping mm -hmm. on the art. So, mm -hmm. this, uh, so we had the flashback issue last time. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're mm -hmm. back to the, the main present day stuff uh, with this character, Razor, uh, mm -hmm. talking to, to Hal and basically saying, hey, we have to try and, you know, the, the blue power battery's gone. Uh, we know that at least the yellow one and what was the other one that's went? Uh, they mentioned another one, but it's the green. Or they also mentioned on Yuzma, which is the red lantern. That's the red one. So, okay. Yep. Uh, so it's like, hey, this is weird. This is all happening. Um, there's a, lot, a quick little flashback to him telling that story, um, and he's like, hey, we need to get to the United Planets and warn them. Well, first he says the Guardians, and how's that the Guardians are gone and no one knows where they yeah. are. Was well, okay. Well, the United Planets. Then you've got a ring. Let's go. And he's like, well, I can't actually fly it out of the atmosphere. It turns off. And he's like, oh, come on. Like, your willpower. If it's turning off, it's because you want it to turn off. So Hal's like, okay, fine. I'll give it another try. So Hal tries it like a couple of times and both times almost dies because it turns it's off. It's so <laughs> funny because the way that it starts with his shoes every time. Yeah. Right? When he, he hits the upper limits and then the first thing to turn back into civilian clothes is his shoes. And it was just so funny to me. Like it's a very serious moment that I should not be laughing at, but uh, yeah. they, they handle it well. Yeah, because he tries it, and then you get a panel of him like choking in his civvies, and then mm -hmm. he's falling through the sky, and then he's back into Green Lantern outfit. He's just mm -hmm. like a little bit of his arm still turning into the outfit, and then he flies back up again. So that nice big full page spread almost of him like you know going through the space. But then mm -hmm. it does go out again and he falls back down. It's basically just a couple of pages of comedy and then he comes back and goes, mm -hmm. nope, not working. We can't just use my ring. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, okay, fine. You've got a bunch of super-powered friends on Earth. Why don't we go to some of them and maybe they can get a message out or something. Like, mm -hmm. and like okay, sounds like a plan. Um, yeah. Carol speeds round the corner and is pissed at Hal because he never got in touch after the big fight with Sinestro that lasted two issues. And she was worried about him, right? And it's kind of a sweet little moment. Um, like, even even not on an ex, as a, as a friend, as someone that he works for her too, I definitely understand where she's coming from. Is like, you never let me know you're okay. That is not a human thing to do. Like, oh, yeah. You know, I, I, think I liked the, it. Yeah, but I think the implication here goes beyond that, though, because the yeah. way... She says, we were worried, Tal. I was worried. I think there's like a... It's almost like the personal life is breaking through. Like, yeah. th like if she was just worried as an employer, she wouldn't have driven out here like this. This this was... No, but I definitely like, though, that she could shield it as that, too. Oh, yeah, because but, Hal, like, but you know. it doesn't matter, though. The entire motivation to come out here was because there's personal feelings at play here. Um, and, of course, Razor uh, Ramon here just sort of goes, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, yo. That, hey, that, Chico. This, this must be this Carol Ferris that we, we yeah. always hear about because Hal never Which, shows up about her. Does she still have her sapphire ring? Because mm. that, 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 they I, never mention Zamoran. You know? I, I do not know. I, maybe so, that'll come out of play. I have no idea. Maybe. Uh, yeah. I do appreciate in the art here that this entire like conversation takes place with stars mm. behind them because it's nighttime. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Nice visual. So... Because Razor says we have to go, uh, Carol says you're leaving, and clearly he's concerned about it. Yeah. And he's like, well... And he's not actually agreed to go technically yet, because they've just admitted that they can't leave. But he's like, well, is there a reason I shouldn't go? Um, mm -hmm. And he basically says, look, if you tell me to stay, and she doesn't answer, she says, oh, I've got to go. Yeah. Like, she just she nopes out of the question as yeah. soon as she can. She gets out of the scene, and she leaves. And I'm like, don't get me wrong. Hal knows she's engaged. It's a bit of a dick move to put that that burden on her. Mm -hmm. But it's you, very Hal Jordan to do, though. Yeah, it's very Hal Jordan to do. But it, it's also you can't deny, and the, the, the writing and the art gets it across to us. But you mm -hmm. can't deny that in the moment, like it feels right for him to say it. Like it feels, mm -hmm. it feels like. He he thinks that she may actually care if he like the the mere fact that she's acting like annoyed or concerned that he's leaving mm -hmm. again suggests that she doesn't want him to. So therefore, he wants her to admit that, and she's you know she's oh I can't admit that and leaves. No. So I think they're playing with the the the, the emotions bubbling under the character's mm -hmm. uh, surface level here quite well. I, I also appreciate that like Razor's like hey why don't you tell her how you feel. And he's like, trust me, she knows. Like, this yeah. is the ball's in her court. 
I, I, she knows. Yeah. I really appreciate, and th- th- not that this is really different from how Hal usually is, but usually when Hal's been abrasive and the fact that he's mm-hmm. like, hey, I like you, and he's always trying to charm her and she's trying to like shoo him away. Mm-hmm. I think there's an interesting spin on it here where he, like, he, he's never said that he's gotten over, he's never said that he doesn't want mm-hmm. to be with her or anything like that. She's just kind of supposedly have moved on to someone else but now is like kind of struggling clearly with the feelings that are still there. And, you know, it is, yeah, it is, is, it's very much her character story to either make a decision of where to go yeah, with that. It's very much a rom-com vibe too, you know? Sure, yeah, yeah. It's a bit so, of that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's not like super serious. Like you can kind of just enjoy mm-hmm. it for what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, Hal takes uh, Razor to Madame Xanadu uh, yeah. to try and get some help. And... They bring up that the the magic, because Razor brings up something about magic, right? With with the rings, yeah. Um, and there's some underlying because of the way that Hal's ring is working isn't isn't consistent with Green Lantern rings, you know. Yeah, she also says that you, you, I can see the Green Guards a secret or something, and Hal's mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, there was a place in Spain that I could feel something when I was fighting Sinestro, some sort mm-hmm. of. Like the power was surging, so there's something there, uh, mm-hmm. and this they realize this right before Rocksteady and a couple of other Green Lanterns from the United <laughs> Planets show up. Yeah, in their tunics. <laughs> yes, you know, definitely a downgrade in Green Lantern uniform. Yeah, but know? they're all wearing identical uniforms. You can tell this has been mm-hmm. sort of mandated. But the yeah. big thing here is that they're here to arrest Razor, and when mm-hmm. Hal sort of shows that he's got a ring, and they realize like, oh, you're an unlicensed Lantern as well, so we'll take mm-hmm. you both in, and the fight breaks out is that these lanterns can just change to a different spectrum. Like they, one, yep. of them, one changes to yellow just by choice, and then the other one changes to blue. And it's like, wait, that's weird. It's also yeah. notable that, hey, all these power batteries that have been destroyed, it seems like these are the ones that they have access to. Yep. Which means with red, red's going to be up in there too. And the thing I know about Razor from from doing a little bit of research, he came from the, the animated series. Yes. Uh, and that he... he he was the one lantern that could do red, green, and blue. So, yeah. you know, yeah, so that, there, there's so, in there. And we saw blue now. We saw yellow. We know the Yizmalt one is down. Yeah. So. so, I mean, Hal says that's impossible. Obviously, mm-hmm. something's cooking here. We're building to something. So that's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and Razor's like, you want a war? We'll give you a war. Mm-hmm. That was another Razor Ramon reference for anyone who didn't get it. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh the the lanterns blast off uh with razor uh they've got mm-hmm. him arrested and they're going to go take him back to the united planets and uh yeah so hal goes off in search of this mysterious place where the the green energy's surging in spain and that's just where the the main story ends with him going into this sort of cave uh, mm-hmm. it says next the secret of the green although not the swamp thing green. no uh obviously well maybe as i don't know maybe for all we know, this is coming from that green. Who knows? Yeah. It's not coming from the so, power battery. What I do like, though, is it feels as this story made me realize the ring that the Hal's using right now very much feels like Alan Scott's ring and the star heart. You know what I mean? The fact that there's magic, kind of, because mm-hmm. up until the, the science fiction-y aspect of Green Lantern, and it was always magic that uh, Alan Scott's worked. So I'm wondering if we're going to be getting the Starheart stuff here. Like maybe that's what's calling out to him, and it, and it's trying to strive for balance. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, Kill it, would Kadal and Scott's ring not work outside of Earth? I I don't remember. I just know it had a weakness to wood, right? Um, mm. So it, it's not quite the same. And we know that Hal forged this one, so it wouldn't quite be the same. But I don't know. I'm feeling okay. like this piece that's calling to him feels very much like the Starheart. It could you know. be that. that. That would make sense. I think, honestly, after those other books, you know, after Batman in Action this week, it was so mm-hmm. nice to read this because I felt engaged in the relationships of the characters, particularly Hal and Carol. Mm-hmm. Razor's an interesting new addition. I'm intrigued by the what's going on with the United Planets. They're still sort of teasing that out. But this new development mm-hmm. that their their lantern troops are switching spectrums at will. Yeah. Um, obviously, Hal being drawn to this cave... Like it feels like this is like a a plot that's go ongoing that I'm enjoying and I'm I want mm-hmm. to know where it's going, 
and each chapter's been very entertaining, plus the art's pretty solid. It's, it's mm-hmm. maybe not quite as good as the, the original artist, but... Zermonico, yeah. yeah. And Zermonico will be back, but... Yeah, the Hilton's um, still doing a solid job, though, for sure. It's somebody, it just, uh, for me, the, the main problem is it, it's kind of like... Who's the who's the artist that we always bag on for having tall heads? Um, oh, uh, oh, God. Oh, but, I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. But there's there's some of that in here, like with Madame Xanadu, and you know the proportions are a little bit off with some stuff, but it never really detracts too much. Um, and just the creativity here with like you know how how turning his his construct into a uh, fire hydrant at one point. You can just tell that the Holpen's having a lot of fun uh, with with the art. So sure, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's just not Zermanico, which is is a hard. Which is a hard thing to criticize. It's, it's a hard bar. Yeah, it's a hard bar yeah. to, to live up to. But I mean, it's, it's, and I, he's doing his best job at mm-hmm. kind of like having similar art, like it is, yeah. as much as he can. So, uh, yeah, no, really solid chapter in this ongoing story. I'm, I'm really digging it a lot. Um, really impressed. Jeremy Adams, I, I enjoyed his flash run, but honestly, mm-hmm. his Green Lantern stuff so far feels like he's leveled up to a different tier, yeah. which is really nice. It's always nice to see a, a writer do that. Uh, and then speaking of, uh, we have backup by Ron Mars and Dale mm-hmm. Eaglesham on the art. Uh, this Holy is... 90s, Batman. Oh, for sure. Uh, this yeah. is a Kyle story. And yeah. not only is it a Kyle story, at the end it promises Jessica Cruz next time. So hey, let's go. Uh, everything's coming up. Peter, Peter uh, on yeah. Green Lantern. Uh, so yeah, it's basically just uh, Kyle talking about how things have went wrong. And it turns out he's talking to a construct of Alex just so he can get his feelings out there. She was the girl that was fridged, correct? I believe so. Yes, so uh, she's the original. I I haven't read that run, so I like, yes. I don't know for sure, but I would suspect that she was the fridged. Okay. Yeah, the, the, or the fridgy. Yes. Uh, which which makes this like it, it, this is the most I like Kyle in a minute. Like I know I like to bag on you, but <laughs> I don't I don't actually hate Kyle. Right? It's just this you know pushback on the show. However, a lot of his stories as of late, ha- there's you know when he does pop up, I haven't enjoyed them as much. So it helps that Ron Mars comes in and kind of restores a bit of the humanity to yeah. Kyle, you know? I think what was impressive to me, or not impressive, that's just not a real word, surprising mm-hmm. to me, I guess, is mm-hmm. that I wasn't expecting a story that was set in current continuity. Yeah. But, you know, what, once you realize he's talking uh, in present day, you know, about the past, and he talks about, oh, something's weird with the United Planets, mm-hmm. and the end of the story is that Joe, Joe Mullen, shows up and mm-hmm. finds him and says, hey, we've been looking for you, Kyle, you've been kind of AWOL, and says hey we have to you know go in the you know something you need to see let's go so yeah like we don't get to hear what she wants to tell him she's mm-hmm. going to, she's going to explain it on the way uh but they fly off into space and it just says you know next time uh some united planet stuff and mm-hmm. jessica cruz is back so the yeah. fact that this is actually tying into the overall stuff is quite cool because it means that this backup feels like the third green lantern book right now yeah which is kind of nice uh and i mm-hmm. like that it's focusing on on kyle and Joe and Jessica for now. Obviously, yeah. I know it's going to turn into Guy and Kilowog yeah. down the line, but... You know, it's a nice little showcase, you yeah. know, for, for all these other lanterns. But yeah, this story with him talking in the Green City, it looks like New York. He's reminiscing about moving to New York just as he had become Green Lantern. He was the last Green Lantern. It wouldn't surprise me if there was literally a story in the early part of the, the original yeah. run where he's fighting mm-hmm. this robot monster thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Just all of that stuff, and you know, again, it, it added the humanity back to Kyle that I feel we haven't been able to focus on because there's been so many other Green Lantern stuff going on, you know. And plus, uh, so it was nice to and have also him the spotlight. for the last like decade, they've kept him in space, so yeah. all of those tethers to his actual ongoing yeah. story just kind of were left behind. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, Kyle was someone that I knew mainly from Morrison's JLA run that I mm-hmm. run. I don't know if I read all of it, but I read a good chunk of that. That was where I initially kind of got to know Kyle. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, his his original run is always something that I do want to get around to. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of it breaks up into being the last Green Lantern, and then when he becomes Ion, when they were when they decided to bring Hal back around, you know, uh, you know, so those are the two eras of Kyle, uh, and and this is leaning on the first part, which I I like because we don't. Oh talk yeah, because the, the Ion stuff is much much later. I'm talking about mm-hmm. the nineties stuff where he yeah. was he was the main Green Lantern for. Mm-hmm. You know, years. Yeah, uh, he was the Green Lantern in that era. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, 
Cool. No, no, it was nice to see this. Uh, mm-hmm. It felt like an old school thing. Eagle Sham's a, a solid artist. Yep. Uh, uh, the crab mask is glorious. Still, still not a fan. That's glorious. Yep. Nah, makes makes all these other Green Lantern outfits look incomplete. Mm, disagree. <laughs> I do love his color scheme though. The the black with the white. Like I always love that. You know, like when they gave him the Ion costume, I was like, this is a downgrade. But, you know, his yeah. design, I always, I always enjoyed his suit. Yeah, I like that it's more of a, there's less green. It's not as over the mm-hmm. top with the green, whereas the rest of them are all like just bathed yeah. in green, whereas he's got more, mm-hmm. you know, more highlights of green as opposed to... Yeah, true. You know, so You know, well, I like when they have different. So, like, Guy, you know, you love or hate the vest, it's unique to Guy. You know, uh, just like this Kyle's design is unique to him. No one else has this. So... Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. All right, what are you giving Green Lantern? Uh, I'm going to give this an 8. Yeah, I, I think I'm happy to give it an 8. I think if you know we still had Zermanico, it would probably bump up a little bit. Yeah. But I enjoyed the main story. I enjoyed the backup, uh, which is, you know, normally when I get to a backup, I'm like, oh, it's got a backup. But often it'll be a lesser thing, but it was actually a really nice, like, oh, this is actually tying into like, the overall mm-hmm. mythos of Green Lantern right now, which is all this United Planets drama. Yep. And it's, you know, the original Kale Rayner writer going to town on him. So uh, I, I like it. 